Not without hope did I ascend upon an amorous quest to fly. That's in love uh, with the idea of flying mm -hmm. out of yourself mm -hmm. to, to enlighten yourself. Mm -hmm. And up I soared so high, so high, I seized my quarry in the end. It's like mm -hmm. in a meditation going up, up, up until actually you get there, yeah, yeah. until actually everything else is gone. Yolanda York Edgell, I'm the Artistic Director of York Dance Project and um, I'm in the studio today um, at the place because um, I'm going to start working with Robert Cohen on a solo he created on a dancer in the 70s and um, really the, this uh, solo is really about the beginnings of a collaboration. Um, Bob's going to rework this solo on me and so, get to, so we can get to know each other because um, after this solo he's going to come and mentor me on my next work. So this is sort of really mainly to get to know each other, see how we work together um, and also an amazing opportunity for me to work with such a legend in the dance world. So Bob, you made this piece in the late 1970s for Susan McPherson, That's right. who was a Canadian dancer who you'd known at the Graham School, who came to England and danced in the first performance of the London Contemporary Dance Group. You talked occasionally about making a solo for and when you originally suggested to her it was either making a, a light-hearted one or a more serious one and she opted for the more serious one. Right, it's, I remember that and at the time I was working I had just worked with Jeffrey Bergen and I think it was he who suggested that he had just written music, a put to, put to music Canciona Stella Alba and uh, I thought a uh, knowing of St. John, of course, uh, St. John of the Cross. I thought that would be suitable, and reading it then definitely suitable. Yes. So it was something that I could get my teeth into. So what attracts you to that type of poetry? Well, if, if you look at the kind of surface understanding of St. John of the Cross, they said that he was writing poetry, sort of naturalistic poetry, because he talks about lovers all the time and the flame of love and, and the, that is uh, in a way always taken as two people loving each other and of course he came from the time when the Muslims had been in Spain and the Sufis were there and they used the lover always as a synonym for God or spirit or soul and they wrote what seems to us now to be erotic poetry, but it wasn't erotic about two people, it was erotic about one person within themselves falling in love with their spirit, with their soul, coming to understand that. And I think if you, the moment you think of that, there is not an external lover, all the poetry then begins to make sense. You have dance in your dreams? Yes. <laughs> so, there's a sequence of n narration in the dream of the, but your body is lying in the bed. Okay, so now it's showing in the body. But it's the same thing, it's that dream inside that has to come out through the body. So, there are no steps. There are internal movements which produce steps. And that's, especially this dance, because it's, it's about, like I said in the beginning, it's like a meditation. So it has to be, uh, the steps of course are there, but it has to be what, what the body tells you to do all the time, or the dream tells the body what to do. And uh, that way it'll start to create a, 
a mood for you yeah. performing it. So Yolanda's been working from a video from 1978 from this, or DVD. So she's translating movement that was made then from a video onto her body. So what are you looking for to draw out? What things would you... I'm trying to find original motivation for a movement. This is always a problem. There's always a difficulty in teaching, uh, learning the dance that's been done before. Because rehearsal directors, dancers, you learn it from a video. And what you're notating is the movement. And what you're looking at is the movement. Well, the movement is, is just the vessel that holds the meaning. And unless the meaning is in there, the movement has no, no, no significance. So, the whole point of recreating something is to recreate, is to create the original movement concept from the sensation or from or toward the idea. And that's what's important. And that's what I have to do with Yolanda. I have to try to find why, find and be able to explain why I did that movement why it's in that position in the, in the dance. What is it saying? How is it working? And try to allow her to interpret it in a way that has significance. Do you want to jump a little bit like a seesaw? Would that feel better? Or if not coming back, maybe, or one? Okay, just, just see what, not, not too high, but just off the floor a little bit. And it's a little too scary. <laughs> <laughs> when you come back from there, uh, you're here. Can you do a turn to your back, turn, or the other way, try the other way. That was okay, that, that's better. Okay. Huh? There was no problem starting, accepting to do the piece for Yolanda because I wanted to get back in the studio, which is the place I always wanted to be and where I lived for years. I, I think, the only question I had was whether I could make the work valid again. Because I like, like to work on uh, the people. So when I create a work, it's for that person. And when Yolanda asked me uh, about the work, I thought, yes, immediately I can do it, even though I wasn't sure what problems would occur. In the end, there weren't many, so let's put it that way. The, I changed very little of the movement. Rather than changing the movement itself, what you try to do is l bridge that gap between the person and the movement. How to date that person can do that movement with validity and make it their own. Dancers are always very good at trying to make a movement their own. And that's, that's what you try to do on the stage. Mm -hmm. you, want to be, you want to believe the movement you're doing. Mm -hmm. No? No, yes. no, that's right, no. I mean, like, like I was saying earlier, I think there's, there's moments when I'm, I'm not believing where, I, where, I, where I'm coming from or what I'm doing. And I can feel that. And then there's other moments I, I know exactly what my intention is or why I'm going somewhere. And it's just getting all those pieces to make it a whole. It, you know, that's just coming mm -hmm. and doing it and doing it. But, um, but even the information you... Remember the first day you said to me, um, 
about am I giving you too much information or maybe I shouldn't. And I was like, no, I want, want to. But actually, was that you're absolutely right because as we've gone along, like yesterday was really important because you said about it being meditation. And that was a new piece of information that made even more sense to me from, it, from the beginning to the end. So. Right. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. true because especially in dance, information is about activity. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to translate it into action immediately. Mm -hmm. it, it's like giving directions of how to go somewhere while you're going. It, it, it has to be, it has to be pertinent. It has to, it has to be about that particular moment. Does that feel all right? So you don't go from here up. You go here up. Okay, now I'll go. So we are in our last week of rehearsals. Um, I just had my last um, official rehearsal with Bob. So all the final notes um, have just been given. And now it's just left to me to take it to the stage, really, and, and um, put everything that we've worked on for the last weeks, months um, together. And, um, and anticipating how that's going to be. You know, I keep imagining about being on stage, taking that first step, being, there being silence, feeling the audience and, and then stepping into, into the movement and hoping that everything comes together and that, that I can also give to the audience as much as I'm... So I don't want it to be a personal, just all about me. I want to experience it, but also share that experience. So I have to perform it as well. Um, but it's... it's, it's um, it's a very important solo for me because of it has sort of takes me back all the history of my whole dance career sort of in this solo. So it means a lot. At this point, the dance is on my side pretty well finished. Uh, it remains to light it, to set it on the stage. And from here on, it is the performance of the piece that gives the life to the piece. The dance will only exist as it's performed. Uh, it doesn't mean that there can't be changes later or adjustments, but each performance will be a living expression of this dance. And you can only take it so far in rehearsal because the temperature of the stage, the quality of the audience reaction, the way your own body feels as you begin the dance, the atmosphere itself, all change the way you perform the work. And that's why dance is always so exciting. It's a living experience at the moment. So the dance will exist now in its performance. <laughs>